Hello, this is Dale Beaumont here, creator of Get Published TV. Welcome to the only dedicated show on the internet to help you to write, publish, and market your own best-selling book. Now, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to set up a website for authors. Now, I'm guessing some of you out there watching this would already have your own website. If you do, great. If you don't, then make sure you pay close attention because I'm gonna go through the steps that you need to go through in order to set the website up. Now, before that though, I wanna give a quick shout out to some of our loyal viewers. Um, these people have been watching uh, almost every episode that we've produced here at Get Published TV and they're always the first people to leave comments in the comment section. It's one of the things I really love um, as a way of sort of giving something back. I feel like I'm sharing with you lots and lots of great information, information that has cost me thousands and thousands of dollars to learn. I'm giving it away to you for free, so the way that you can say thanks is by leaving a comment and uh, getting part of uh, the community here. But these are the people that have been really getting involved. Um, the first one I'd like to recommend is Connor. Connor, you've been a really great supporter. Leaves a comment on you know virtually every episode, so thank you, Connor. Also, Tommy G, who's uh, normally the first to uh, respond, which is, uh, which is great. We have Hannon as well, um, who's been leaving a lot of comments. Um, um, someone that goes under the username Changing Tools, um, who's uh, been commenting a lot as well, and he's also just published his own book. So congratulations on that, and thanks for your comments. And also, I think it's Pointer um, from the Netherlands. So it's really great to know that this show is truly going international. And there's people now tuning in from all parts of the globe. So thanks very much to those guys. Now, the only reason why this is all possible is because of a website, getpublishedtv.com. And we're now gonna talk about how you can have your own website as well, if you're an author or you're an aspiring author and you're on your way to getting published. So I'd recommend that you start now, even if your book isn't actually finished, because you can start building up your following, building up your community, building up your fan base. So when your book is actually ready to launch, you can actually hit the ground running. You're able to send out a message to you know, everybody and uh, give them an opportunity to buy the book. So I would really believe that you should start this now. Don't put it off to when your book is finished. You know, do it immediately. So what do you need to do if you want to set up a website? Let me go through a couple of things. The first thing that you're probably going to need um, is to get a domain name. So the domain name, also known as a URL, is where your actually website is located. So uh, here, ours is www.getpublishedtv.com. And I've got a personal one as well, which is Dale, D-A-L-E, and then Beaumont, B-E-A-U-M-O-N-T, Dot com as well. I'm going to have a whole bunch of uh, other websites that I own. So you've got to decide uh, what is going to be the name of your website. So some things you've got to think about are, um, is it going to be based on your personal name? That's one way that you can go. Another one is, is it going to be based on the name of your book? Or is it going to be based on maybe a name of your publishing company that you may want to set up if you're an independent author or, or you tr choose to self-publish? Now, of course, there's pros and cons of each of those. It all comes down to what is your bigger picture. Because if your bigger picture is to be very prolific and to write five or you know ten books over the next few years, then doing it about the name of a single book is probably not the best thing. Um, so you may want to then stick to your personal name because you've got obviously a lot of different book titles rather than just kind of one. However, saying that, if you plan to do a whole lot of books but under a particular series, for example, you know, Harry Potter, then you may want to just register harrypotter.com or whatever the name is of your series and uh, then that way, that's what people are going to be searching for, the name of that series, more so than actually you as the author. So therefore, you'll probably get better results by naming it as a series and then all of your books fall underneath that. The other way you could go, like I mentioned, is to actually um, do it as a name of a publishing company that you may set up. I have Dream Express Publishing. You may um, set up your own publishing company. Um, now, if you're only going to be publishing your books, then maybe you want to do that under your personal name. However, if your vision in the future is to publish books by other people, other authors, and maybe you know help them to get in the print once you've learned the skills for yourself, then maybe you actually want to set up the name of a, of a company, a publishing company, that will then produce your books and also advertise the books of other people that you're publishing for. 
So there's a couple of different ways that you can go. Think about what your big picture is and then make the decision that's right for you. Other things which are pretty much common sense is you know, making sure that it's, it's short rather than you know, very long. The longer it is, the harder it is for people to remember. And you also want to be careful about using words which uh, can possibly be misspelt or are spelt differently in particular different countries. For example, the word center could be spelt C-E-N-T-E-R or R-E, depending on where you actually live. So avoid words like that that can actually be misspelt and big words that uh, people could read uh, misspell regularly, like the word entrepreneur um, is, um, is a word that many people still <laughs> misspell, especially if they're typing quickly. Um, so it's a good thing to keep the words simple. The other thing that you've got to decide is whether or not you want to be a tapping into a global market. If so, then I would highly recommend or say it's essential that you register a .com or at least a .net. Um, or if you're just selling your books in the UK, then maybe you want to do .co.uk or in Australia .com.au um, because if you want to appeal to a worldwide market, you really need to have a .com. If you want to appeal to your market, then by having a, a domain name which appears to be from your country, then you're going to get uh, better results. Um, and, um, and, and so the next question is obviously where do you register a domain name? Well, there's hundreds of different domain name registration companies out there. You can do a Google search and type in register a domain name. They should be fairly inexpensive. If you're registering a .com, you're looking at about $20 per year, sometimes even $10 per year. If you're registering a .com.au or .co.nz, then each country is going to be different. Um, it could be up to maybe $70 or $80 per year depending on the domains you're actually registering. Um, so I'm not gonna say any more on that, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. The next thing after your domain name is gonna be your hosting. So a lot of people wonder, well, what actually is hosting? Well, imagine if your website was on your computer. So if every night you went to sleep, you turned your computer off, then your website has no way of being able to connect to the World Wide Web, so therefore your website would go down. Why? Because it's stored on your computer, it's stored on your hard drive, and your hard drive is effectively shut down. So what a hosting company is, it's basically a company that has lots and lots of hard drives, but they operate 24 hours a day. So your website gets stored onto one of these hard drives, and um, they always have backups. So if this hard drive ever goes down, then your website will move to another hard drive, and then if that ever goes down, they have another hard drive. So you, you know, most of the, most good hosting companies will guarantee you a 98% uptime or even a 99% uptime, which means that your website will always be present because you don't want to have a website that, that um, you know it gets uh, shut down or, or that uh, isn't up you know 24 hours a day. So that's very very um, important. So find a good company. Um, you can do some Google searches on that. You can speak to other website owners or other bloggers um, who. You know, use different hosting companies, um, and this shouldn't cost you a lot of money. Um, it should cost you somewhere between ten to twelve dollars per month, so it's very inexpensive. If someone wants to charge you three or four hundred dollars per month, then probably run the other way because they may be ripping you off. Okay, so do your research. Um, and uh, you could also speak to other web developers as well and ask them what hosting would they actually recommend. So it's not essential that you do this first, um, but as long as when you're talking to a web developer, which we'll talk about in a sec, then um, you know, make sure that you've, you're working with a hosting company that's gonna work for them as well. Number three is design. So you've gotta pick a design. Now there are many, many different formats that are out there for setting up a website. There are hundreds. The one that I would recommend is one called WordPress. So put that into Google and check it out, WordPress. It's in my opinion the best platform to build a website from because then you can make changes and you can update it really quickly and easily and most web developers around the world are familiar with WordPress so you'll be able to get the best support when you want to make changes to the site. Now what you would do is actually set up a WordPress theme. You have to pick, sorry, a WordPress theme. So if you type into Google WordPress themes and have a bit of a look around, you'll see there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Now there's two different types. One are free ones and one are paid ones. Now the free ones are okay, they're good, but a lot of people just go with the free ones and therefore you find that those themes or those designs are used quite a lot. And you want to have a website that's kind of unique, that people haven't really you know, seen before. Um, so therefore, you'd probably want to go with a paid theme. Now the paid themes, when I say paid, they're not very expensive, you know, they're not thousands of dollars, they're probably only 40 to 60, maybe 80 dollars, they're not very expensive. So pay that money and get yourself a, a good looking theme, one that you're happy with, and one that looks 
um, has the feelings and emotions that you want to then represent. So once you've picked it, then what you would do is you would contact a web developer and they will then take that theme and they'll attach it to your um, hosting company and what that's normally called is the installation. They'll install your WordPress theme onto uh, your website, onto your domain name and it'll be hosted onto your through your hosting company. Um, so you'll need to come up with find a developer to do that installation. Now because you're using a WordPress theme, it shouldn't take a huge amount of time. For most people that know what they're doing, to do an installation will take around about an hour, maybe two hours maximum. But if someone's gonna tell you that it's gonna take you 17 hours in order to install a WordPress um, a WordPress theme, then uh, I would probably say run the other way, okay? Because there's a lot of uh, shonky operators out there, so you wanna make sure that you get someone that knows what they're doing so you're not paying more than you should. So develop a relationship with a trustworthy um, website developer, they'll be able to do this for you. And then if you ever wanna make changes in the future, they'll be able to do that as well. So this has been a really basic overview about how to set up a website. We've spoken about having a domain name, having hosting, then picking a, a design or a, a theme, which is we recommend WordPress. And then the other one would be the installation, which is done through a web developer. So they're the steps that you actually um, need to go through. Um, some people may want to make further customizations, like be able to sell books um, through their website as well, or to be able to add videos and all that other stuff. Talk with your web developer. A lot of that stuff you'll be able to do yourself once you learn how to use the WordPress platform and there's some great video tutorials about how to use WordPress. If you go to youtube.com and you type in you know, WordPress or how to use WordPress, a bunch of videos will come up. They'll teach you how to make changes yourself. Most of them you'll be able to do, but occasionally you'll need to continue to be in touch with your website developer in order to you know, make more advanced changes. All right, so that's been a little bit of a basic video about how to set up a website for an author to promote your book. Um, that wraps up this video now, but leave us your comments. Uh, if you have a domain company that you work with, or you're, you're a website developer, or you know a website developer, or you use a particular host, leave those links in the comment section on Get Published TV, because I'm sure they may be able to help some other people watching. Thanks for tuning in. Hope it's been informative. We'll see you again next time. Um, need to call this guy soon. Um, apparently, Henny or something. Okay. The guy from your, where your car is. Yep.